Hello again, I am Blunty. Would you like to play Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Steam Deck, Cloud Gaming, Android TV, or nearly anything else with a video output but on your face? Well, these are the Virtue One XR glasses. They started life about a year ago as a Kickstarter campaign and are now a fully complete retail ready product. You can just Buy. They are not a VR headset. They are not smart glasses. They are not augmented reality glasses, nor can they be put to use as any of the above with any effectiveness whatsoever. What they are is in fact very, very simple. They are what the brand is calling XR glasses, ostensibly standing for extended reality, despite the word extended starting with an E, not an X. So. EX glasses, really. If you want to sidestep the branding nonsense of X sounding cooler, I thought we'll pass that in the 90s, but whatever. Except it's, it's not even that, really. Uh, these things are in no way extending reality, unlike augmented reality or mixed reality devices, which do effectively extend reality by actively tracking the outside world, at least to some extent, from anywhere from simple positioning and ground level all the way to full on depth scanning your room like the Quest 3 does. These do not do that. They've got no idea what the outside world is even doing at all. They have no way of knowing. They do have an extremely basic three degrees of freedom motion tracking chip, but even that is basically useless as I'll try and remember to touch on later. Um, so what do you actually get for your around 500 US dollar buy-in? Well, you get a wearable screen. That's it. That's all these things do. That's all they're designed to do. And I made a whole video yesterday about how awesome virtualized screens could be for mixed reality and virtual reality specifically with the new MetaQuest 3 headset and its full color passer and all that kind of stuff and room mapping. But this is a very different experience which has some significant advantages but just as many disadvantages as well. Uh, it's slightly unfair to compare to the two but it makes a useful touch point anyway. So. Let's start with the hardware. The core of the experience is two micro displays which are reflected into your eyes via a little prism thingy. And much like VR headsets are designed, they are made so your eyes sort of focus in the middle distance, not sort of right here where you know the screens actually are, so you don't get eye strain or fatigue, things like that. So they're very comfortable to actually look at the screen that's projected inside here. The image presented is 1080p at up to 60 FPS. And if your immediate reaction is, hey, that's way, way, way lower than the resolution of current VR headsets. Yeah, you're right, it is. Except these still give you a noticeably sharper and more detailed image. And the trick to that is, well, a VR headset, it, they're designed to stretch their screens, thus the resolution across a wide field of view, commonly at about 100 degrees or so. These screens are designed to project the whole resolution to a floating screen in front of you at a much, much narrower field of view. This is why we don't talk about image sharpness in VR headsets and the like only in terms of resolution. That's part of it, but it's not the only thing. But instead we talk about PPD, or pixels per degree, effectively. In the Quest 3, the PPD is going to be 25. On these, it's 55. So, when I'm comparing watching a movie in a virtual cinema in VR versus watching the same movie from the same file on these, these do have a noticeably cleaner, sharper image. Hey, mid-edit Blunty here. I did indeed completely forget to mention the three degrees of freedom uh, motion tracking thing and why it's basically useless. You see, in normal use, when you have these on your face, the screen is just projecting in front of you. And if you move your head, the screen goes with you, you know? But there is a mode in these you can trigger, uh, uh, which makes the screen sort of move around slightly independently of your head using that three degrees of freedom. So it looks like the screen is almost stuck in space. The problem is it doesn't work very well. You lose a lot of resolution because it needs to shrink the image to use the rest of the pixels to move the screen around virtually. Um, and there's not a lot of wiggle room in there. So it, it it's really not worth using at all. So having that three degrees of freedom, that sort of motion sensitivity is absolutely pointless. Also, it's only three off, so if you lean forward or lean back, the screen doesn't, uh, you know, accommodate for that either. So extremely limited, basically useless, which is why I forgot to mention it, because I used it once and thought, oh, and never used it again when I was testing these over the last uh, several weeks. However, 
Gone is the immersion of VR. Gone is the ability for the screen to sit in one virtual space as I look around. Gone is the ability to block out outside distractions of the you know, outside world. And gone is any of the social experiences that shared viewing in VR or MR can offer. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Keeping situational awareness while also enjoying personal video content could be very, very useful. Safety in public, for instance, because you can see what's going on around you. Uh, you can see when your train has arrived at your station, if you're using these things on, on public transport or on a plane, you can see when the food and drinks cart is rolling by. And I have used VR headsets on a plane before and missed a meal because of it. You'd think you'd be able to smell it, but yeah, I missed, I missed a meal because I was watching a movie in VR. <laughs> Not with these. You can even have the screen project onto just the corner, a little picture-in-picture -picture style thing, so you can have cleaner vision through the lenses. Say, for example, you're doing I don't know, the dishes or some other basic housework, folding laundry, and you want to also sort of you know, watch a little video in the corner of your vision as well. They can do that. That said, the field of vision through these is very restricted compared to normal glasses. Uh, so the practicality of doing housework or even simply walking down the street is extremely extremely limited. For example, they sit further forward, so they kind of have a little blinder effect. They're quite dark, uh, darker than sunglasses tend to be. The field of vision stops about here. So, you know, I can't see anything up here. It stops there. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's not fantastic to try and see things through these as you're doing things, but you can sort of. Like I said, it's enough for situational awareness. Like when I was wearing these on the train, I didn't miss my train stop because I could just look out the train window and go, oh, there's my stop. Job done. That's 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 what it's useful for. Unfortunately, there's also no headphone port, so anything you're watching is pumping its sound through the little speakers on the arms of the device. Uh, so you will have to be mindful of disturbing other people sitting nearby you if you're using my public transport, for example. Or uh, if you can, you can use headphones connected to the device providing the video signal to these, uh, which is a little clumsy, extra cables and whatnot, but it's workable. Uh, but the built-in speakers do actually have. Um, is a pretty decent sound for what they are. And in reality, if you're a super particular person about the audio visual experience of your content, these are not going to be your first choice anyway. These are convenience items, not cinema files, golden tickets to <laughs> awesome viewing and listening. Uh, they are way lighter and more compact than VR headsets are, of course, weighing just 78 grams, which of course is way, way heavier than a regular pair of glasses. So they're not exactly invisible to wear, um, but at least at a glance, you know, they're a lot more subtle than wearing a VR headset in public or in public transport or whatever, uh, or just sitting in a park or on, on the street or whatever. You know, it's going to attract a lot less, you know, second glances and staring and things like that. While they're actually in use, you will still have a cable hanging down, which I could just attach there. Um, so that might be distracting for some people, though we're pretty used to seeing people with headphones. We're probably going to ignore a cable, right? Um, but it won't take long for people to notice they're not just simply sunglasses if they look at you for more than a couple of seconds or are standing close to you. Uh, and I did get some double takes and some staring when I did test these in public. The overall effect of the floating screen is pretty decent in most environments, surprisingly so actually. Um, the outside lenses here use an electrochromatic film so they can darken on command which is pretty neat. It's been pretty useful for a little extra contrast or if I'm lying on the bed to block out sort of lights or the fans on the ceiling and stuff like that. Um, and they even work pretty decently in direct sunlight. There's also a completely opaque shade you can clip onto them to completely block out the lenses. Um, they also come with a range of nose bridges for the best comfort and fit. And you will need to fiddle with these. You really, really will because the sweet spot position for you know seeing the screens inside here is very narrow. But once you do dial it in and figure out, you know, the best fit in your, your sweet spot position for wearing these things, they do work fine. There's also diopters on the top of the lenses here for near and far sighted adjustments. Unfortunately, I am neither far nor near sighted, but I do still need uh, corrective lenses for my slight astigmatism. Uh, when Virtue offered to send me these for review, I did specifically request they send me their optional prescription lens clip in insert thingies, which they do have. Um, and they agreed to do that. Awesome. But then they didn't send those and then they ignored my emails when I asked them about uh, getting that. So there's that. And you really can't wear these, you know, over your more normal glasses like you can most VR headsets because <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, which also means I couldn't really wear these for more than an hour or so without having 
significant eye strain start to set in. I could only get through a full movie once, and I regretted that uh, a bit too. So, um, anyway. Now, connection-wise, as you might have seen before, there's a proprietary magnetic connector on the glasses. It just kind of snaps in there. It's very easy to connect and disconnect, uh, you know, blindly, so you don't have to take them off to do it. And, of course, if you trip over the cable, they pop off nice and easy, but it is proprietary. So if you damage or lose your cable, that's a massive pain in the ass, isn't it? Uh, on the other end is a standard USB-C, and from this you can plug directly into anything that can output a standard video feed over USB-C. So your PC, your Mac, many Android phones, uh, presumably also the new iPhone 15 now that it has a USB-C uh, jack on it as well. Uh, I use mine mostly with my ROG Ally and my MacBook Air, and it works perfectly fine. There's also a special USB dongle that will let you... Uh, use the glasses and a charger on your device at the same time if you only have the one USB port where your device also needs to charge from. So that's kind of handy. Virtue also sell an accessory neckband, which comes in this little charging case here for it as well. Um, and this is how you can use these glasses as essentially standalone devices. The neckband is nothing more than uh, a fairly ordinary Google TV stick, basically, but in a neckband shell. So you just pop it on there and you connect it directly to the glasses like that. And away you go. Um, and from this, you can do all the normal Android TV stuff, including using stuff like Plex to access your own media server, or indeed streaming services and apps and gaming streaming stuff, either from cloud services or locally from your own consoles. It works basically in exactly the same way as it does from like an Android handset, of course, because it is Android, just Android TV. Um, but as an Android TV device, it's kind of wonky. I had a lot of software issues with it and its little fan is loud as shit. Not super awesome, but serviceable. Its battery, is, well, it lasts just long enough to get through the average movie, and that's about it. Outside of that, they have special backplates for the, <laughs> the cable just flew off, special backplates for the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck, which accommodate a combination dock and battery on the back of them. And from this, you can power your devices and feed either a USB-C based video signal or a plain old HDMI input to the glasses. Glasses can also operate in a side-by-side -side 3D mode, because these are two independent screens in here, essentially. Um, and I also had a lot of trouble with that. More than half the time I tried to use it, which is toggle the little button on the side here, um, it, it just freaked out. It, one of the screens went blank, the other one showed an image, or it gobbled up the image, or it just didn't, wasn't accepted properly by the device at the other end. No matter what I tried it with, it just half the time it didn't work, more than half the time. When it was working, it was pretty good. It was a very, very convincing 3D effect. It was fantastic. But, you know, the problems I had with it, I, I emailed them about that too, with no solution. They said they would send me a replacement neckband to try, but that also never wound up appearing, um, just like the inserts for the prescription lenses. And I guess on finally, on, on, on comfort, they're pretty good, except the left arm gets way hot. Not, not burn your skin hot or dangerous hot, but certainly hotter than I'd like it to whenever you took them off again. Oh, jeez, bloody hell, that's oof. Uh, so, can I recommend these? Not really. It's an cool as shit thing when it works and having a pretty decent virtual screen floating in front of my face using nothing more than a pair of sort of slightly bulky glasses is awesome which for the record on their marketing they say it's like a, having a 120 inch screen floating in front of your face it's not that it's it's maybe half that screen size sitting at a regular sort of couch tv kind of distance I'm not sure where they imagine that 120 inch impression comes from but it's it's kind of bs um, I look forward to this technology getting super good, where it's wireless and indistinguishable from a more sort of normal looking and feeling, especially a pair of glasses. Um, but this, this is still deep in, in the hobbyist and bleeding edge tech nerd stuff. It works, and for the most part it works well, but there's just still too many limitations and compromises to make this a recommend for the average consumer. Also, considering it's basically as expensive as an entire Quest 3, even without the ability to, uh, what have I done with the thing? Without the ability to work sort of independently as its own separate wireless device. And that just kind of makes it a silly buy right now, in my opinion. It needs a deep revision or a massive price cut for it to be practical and worth recommending to a regular person. All of that said, I do intend to keep these and keep using them. Probably not often, but they are pretty neat and they do, you know, do their essential core job of projecting a screen out here for me uh, remarkably well. And if I can get the prescription inserts, watching movies in these things or, or you know, entire, you know, anime series binge without getting eye strain, um, which I sometimes do in VR, 
these are uh, a much more comfortable way to do that for, for long periods because obviously they're a lot more comfortable than a VR headset. They're a lot lighter. I can keep my situational awareness. If I want to reach for a drink, it's easy. All that kind of stuff. So yeah, almost there. So close. So damn close. The next, you know, generational two of these uh, style of devices are going to be amazing. You know, once, once they can look a little more like regular glasses, just have a little you know, projector on the arms here in, into the regular lenses and stuff like that. So I can just walk around all day, every day with little you know, video uh, windows or, or information coming up and oh, there's, a, there's an email I just got in, there's a message from who and who, do I need to pull the phone out of my pocket to answer that? Basically what I want from a device like this is what I use my Apple Watch for when I'm out and about. Just a, a quick and easy, oh, do I need to pay attention to that alert kind of deal? I want the same kind of thing in, in these, in these XR glasses, as well as the ability to just put a little video window up when I'm walking around, you know, watching YouTube videos, music videos, I don't know, TV series, just as I'm strolling down the street, going to and from the train stop, on a plane, whatever. But yeah, we're um, not quite there yet, but what a cool first step. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Thank you as always for the patrons scrolling up above there, and I will catch you next time.